So that just proves that we can't survive without salt uh, as human beings, and animals can't either. So we need salt in our diets. We just need the right kind of salt. And what we've evolved over the last 50 years is to eating an unrefined salt, which is not a natural part of our diet. Do you think animals need salt the way we need salt, like Celtic sea salt or other unrefined? Absolutely, animals need salt. And animals uh, will gravitate to where salt is, is available to them. That's interesting. You said there's 32 references to salt in the Bible, obviously salt of the earth, but 31 other references, that salt is in IVs, big part of medicine, but what kind of salt is in an IV? Sodium and chloride is the kind of salt in an IV and just to maintain fluid status in people, but that doesn't supply the minerals, and that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about unrefined salt with over 80 minerals in it. That's but awesome. salt's a big part of medicine, and it's always, it's always been a big part of medicine. It will be a big part of medicine for, for as long as medicine is going to deal with human beings since salt is the second major constituent in our bodies. I watched you on a show online with another doctor in a discussion about bioidentical hormones. For those people that are not clear about the benefits and the distinction between taking hormones and bioidentical hormones. Would you share the distinction for them? Well, that show is on my website, which is drbrownstein.com. Um, and the, what I was discussing with that conventional doctor was the difference between bioidentical natural hormones and synthetic hormones. And I've been using bioidentical natural hormones in my practice for over 20 years now. I found them safe and effective for, for enhancing health and treating a wide variety of conditions. And my feeling is that there's no reason to use a synthetic hormone ever in a human being when there's a natural bioidentical hormone available. A bioidentical hormone is a substance that has a direct chemical structure of our own hormones. So when our body sees it, it has a receptor that it binds to and it has enzymes to break it down. This is contrasted with synthetic hormones where the body's never seen it before. We don't have receptors to bind it. We don't have ways to clear it out of our body. And these are much, much more toxic items for our body. The example that I would give the listener is natural progesterone is a bioidentical natural hormone made from plant products, a direct duplicate of our own progesterone production, whereas Provera the most commonly prescribed progesterone in the United States is a synthetic form of it. And Provera has been associated with breast cancer and autoimmune disorders and blood clots and death at much higher rates. And natural progesterone has not been associated with any of those things. In fact, it's been shown to improve health and to lower rates of those illnesses and to, to perhaps even lower the death rate for those that take it. How many women in the last maybe 10 years come in having been educated about bioidentical hormones? Well, I've been writing my books for about 12 years now, so many of them have read my books, and they're, you know, I consider my patient population a fairly well-educated population. And over the last 10 years, people have become more interested and educated about natural bioidentical hormones because of all the headlines on the synthetic hormones. Um, so people are are definitely more aware of these items and more unwilling to tolerate being prescribed synthetic hormones, which I don't think anybody should be on and any doctor should be prescribing them. And I think the FDA, if it was really watching out for our health, should pull those items from the market right now. Which ones would you pull? Well, I would start with pulling Provera, which should have been pulled uh, 20 years ago when the studies started to come out. But that one has certainly done the most damage of any of the uh, synthetic hormones. And cause the most problems, including, you know, the breast cancer epidemic and death and strokes and, and blood clots and, you know, a whole host of other problems. What about Premarin? Wasn't that also a problem? Premarin is also a problem. It doesn't seem to be quite the severe problem that, that Provera is, but there, there's, there's, no, there's really no indication for using Premarin in any human female when we have human female hormones that are bioidentical and readily available to be used. So Premarin shouldn't be used either, but it doesn't seem to quite have the toxicity that Provera has. You have also written Overcoming Arthritis. 
The Guide to Healthy Eating, and The Guide to a Gluten-Free Diet. Overcoming Arthritis, Dr. Batman G, prior to his passing, wrote a book, Your Body's Many Cries for Water, that a lot of the people he found that had arthritis, if they drank the proper amounts of water, could help eradicate it. What do you think about that, and what is your take on it? I think that uh, he wrote a very... He wrote very eloquently about a an important subject, and I couldn't agree with him more. And um, one of the basic tenets to helping people overcome arthritis is to drink adequate amounts of water. And I read about that in my book as well. That's great. The science of hydration. He did like a thirty year study on it. I'm so sorry that he's not here to talk with us today. He died a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. His work certainly still lives on. Yeah, it's uh, quite extraordinary. Do you find that most of your patients, when they first come in, are dehydrated? vast majority of my patients are dehydrated, and so I educate them about drinking water and, and salt, using water and salt as part of their daily regimen. And um, when they start using water and salt, their skin improves, their nails improve, their hair improves, and arthritis symptoms get significantly better. And most importantly, their brain function also improves as their brain rehydrates. Amazing. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us today about your other books? Well, I would tell the listener to do their own reading, to to educate themselves and make their own health decisions. And I'm sure when they read what I've written about all these subjects, that they'll come to the same conclusion I have, that we need to really rely on ourselves and to to eat the right foods and to to take the right supplements to uh, improve our health and, and not just rely on media headlines, which can certainly lead us astray. I have another question for you about something so common that people go through every day, which are headaches. Now, we know that Dr. Batman G wrote extensively about how water and salt can help. Hydrating properly can eliminate headaches. I just wondered what your findings have been also with regard to the elimination and prevention of headaches. There's no question that you can't you can't not improve headaches in a dehydrated state. So first step is water and salt is to rehydrate the body. And really the, the next step that I found for headaches is to get the thyroid working correctly. And the vast majority of people, the headaches will either go away or get markedly better by following those steps. That's amazing. What is with the adrenals and the adrenaline disorder? It seems to me that you and I live in a society where people are exhausted and fatigued. We know that it's multifaceted, and part of it is even from the electromagnetic radiation that we're in and the toxins and drinks that we take in. But the adrenals, are they not a whole other realm of concern to you? The adrenals are two endocrine glands on the lower part of the kidneys, and they sit in our, in our back, and um, they produce hormones that help us give energy so we can exercise or go do our daily activities. When we're in a stress state, they'll produce hormones to help us cope with that stress and to run a little faster or fight a little harder, depending on what we need to do. And in this constant stressful world that we're in now, the adrenal glands can become overstressed and, and become sluggish and not produce the hormones like they should. Now, one of the reasons this happens is um, iodine deficiency. Iodine not only concentrates in the thyroid, it concentrates in the adrenal glands as well. The other aspects that control adrenal function are salt intake. That's fascinating. The adrenal glands regulate salt, and salt helps to regulate the adrenal glands. So it's impossible to have good functioning adrenal glands without adequate iodine and adequate salt intake and adequate water intake. So all of this sort of fits in together, and you know, I write about this in all my books. Yeah, these books are fantastic. Salt Your Way to Health. This book will show you why salt is the most misunderstood nutrient. That's a great book in iodine, why you need it, why you can't live without it. These two books I have on my desk every day to make sure I remember to take iodine and to make sure I have the right amount of salt in my system. And I really think everybody listening to the show, you need to get these books to understand how critical this is that this is part of your daily life. Dr. Brownstein, I want to thank you for being a guest on It's Rainmaking Time. Is there anything else you wish to say before we close? Well, I'd like to thank you for having me, and thank you for listening. And just, you, you can find out more information on my website, which is drbrownstein, B-R-O-N, B-R-O-W-N-S-T-E-I-N.com.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have been talking with